Hello everybody, welcome to the class today. I'm Nolan Clark and in this class we're going to be painting one of the classics. It's called Girl with Sailboat and was originally painted by American artist Edmund Tarbell. This is always a lot to learn from these old master paintings so follow along and I'll show you step by step how we do that. Alrighty, so this is the, the image. I got it off Wikipedia. It's now in the open domain, so we're free to paint it, and I'm really excited about it. So I think before we hop in and just start painting, what I want to do is just give you just a, a very, very brief sort of summary of Edmund and where he came from, so that we know who we who are we working from today? So he was born in 1862, which is really a long time ago. And he studied in at uh, Boston Museum School, which was an art school. He was quite artistic from young. And it seems like his, his uh, mother really encouraged him to continue with that. Because he eventually went on to also study in Paris for quite a while. And then when he came back to America, he became an art tutor at his old school. And in the process, he was he joined a group of other artists, and they called themselves the Ten American Painters. And they used to often exhibit together. So as you can see, he liked to paint in an impressionistic style. And I, I suspect that's what he was teaching his students as well at the, at the school. So this specific painting here was painted in 1899 and it's probably of a family member. His family members were his subject figures to paint. Um, his most famous uh, painting, let me just get that, is this one over here, which is of his three sisters. Um, I considered painting that today, but I think you'll agree with me. It's a little bit complex for uh, a class like this. But this one here has all the same techniques in it. So it's going to be great fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So just to let you know, I'm not going to try and create a perfect replica of his painting. What I'm interested in is us learning the, the techniques and stuff that he used. That was for me more important than getting it to look 100%. And I want you, as you paint also, don't try and get everything 100%. Just get it to look similar. What you're interested in is, is learning those techniques and stuff that he used. That's where the, that's where the value lies and not necessarily getting it to look 100%. Alrighty, if you are a patron, you can go and download, there's a, a full-size printable template. I'm working on a 16 by 12 inch canvas today, which is roughly 400 by 300 millimeters. So you can go and print out the, the reference. I've gridded one up if you want to use that to, to draw out. And if you're using the, the full-size um, or the same size uh, Canvas is me. You can go and print that guy out, which is a, just a tile template. And I've used that. And I've transferred the, the sketch outlines onto my canvas. So what I've used for that was just regular pen carbon. I took my template, put it over here, pen carbon underneath, and then just transferred that. And then I came back just with a pencil just to solidify one or two of the lighter lines and that way at least I know the proportions and stuff that in, in the final result should look pretty similar so if you do want to go and download those those templates and things I've added a link there into the chat box and then my uh, my website 
address is there on the screen there at the moment, onlineartlessons.com. You can go and download them from there. Alrighty. So the first thing that I'm noticing is that Edmund did an un underpainting on this painting. If we go to the to the photo, unfortunately, you d there's no very large uh, version photo of this on the on the internet. So we have to work with this is the the largest photo I could find. And as you can see, it's not particularly good quality. But if we look really carefully in between these little blues and things, can you see like here and there and even in between here, it seems like there's little bits of um, of like a burnt sienna underpainting that was, that was added. So I think what he's done is added a very light underpainting down here. And then as he's come down to the bottom, he's gradually darkened it up a little bit and that's then formed the, the sand. So that saved him from having to l physically paint the sand. So we'll go and do something similar. So I am painting in oil today, but you can follow along in acrylic. The techniques are absolutely identical. Now I don't paint using terps anymore. And traditionally, when you do your uh, underpainting, you, you, you take your, your tops and you add in a little bit of paint and then you, you use that to add that layer of paint over your canvas. So if you are working with tops, then go ahead. Uh, I'm going to use just acrylic for the underpainting. Put a tiny amount over there. And then what you do is you just dip your, your paintbrush into um, into the tips. In this case, I'm just going to dip it into water. It's going to be the same process. So I think before I go too far, let me just show you the equipment that I have packed out for today. So I've got this, it's a, what's that, a two-inch hardware brush over there. I've got two just standard bristle brushes. So that's about a half an inch, one centimeter. That's about one and a half centimeters. And then I've got two soft fine rounds that I've packed out. And I've got a rigger brush for doing those little finer details on the dress and the of the boats and so on. And then I've just got my favorite brush, which is a a soft full bit brush, which is also about it's a centimeter, but a quarter inch or half inch, whatever that, that size is, half an inch, just less than half an inch. And then the paints that I've packed out is titanium white, burnt sienna, raw umber. I've got cadmium lemon, you can use cadmium yellow as well, cadmium orange, cadmium red, and French ultramarine. So those are the colors that, that I'll be using today. And we'll start off with this burnt sienna. All right, so just dip your, your brush into the, the tips or the water. And you see, I want it super watery. We just want a, a really thin layer of paint on the canvas. You see how watery that is? Awesome. And I'm just going to give it a, a really thin coating. All you're trying to do here is just get rid of that white of the canvas. So that if you do have any any of the background shining through as you paint, because you're working an impressionistic style, everything is um you know I think I'll yeah, what the heck we'll we'll cover everything. Um 
because you're painting an impressionistic style it's in little strokes so you'll often have bits of the background it's not so easy to cover it up so the idea here is that as you let's just bring the the palette up as well where can i put him down just tiny there in the corner just so you can see what i'm doing over there So the idea is that when you've got little bits of, if the background does shine through, um, it's not white. Now why you're using the burnt sienna is because that's the main color in this painting is blue. And burnt sienna is the opposite color. Burnt sienna is also great for if you do underpaint your paintings in, uh, when you're doing landscapes. Because it's the opposite color for the sky. But it's also um, a nice neutral color for the for the ground itself. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, so I'm going to dry this guy off now with a hair dryer. And you can do the same if you're using the oil paint with the, the turps. The hair dryer also blasts it and gets rid of that turps quite quickly. So while I do this, if you do have any questions, just uh, fire away in the chat box. I am checking all the way along and I'll answer as we go. with a single layer like me, make sure that your canvas is well dry because oil and acrylic don't mix. So now I'm also just going to have to clean off my palette, get rid of all this, the water and the acrylic paint. To get in perfectly perfectly dry as well so that we can go over to using the, the oil if you have a, a, a different palette you can do that as well so just give me a few seconds to do that awesome Alrighty, so we'll start at the, the back, in other words, the top of the canvas, and then we'll work our way down. So we'll start there by the, um, by the sky, and then there's a little bit of a, a beachhead way at the back, because this is now, I suspect it was a lake. He, he bought himself a holiday home at a lake, and... Uh, this looks awfully like a lake, it's not the sea. So the first thing that you also want to do is just make sure, now that you've covered this, that you can still see all your all your sketch outlines and stuff. I think I'm I think I'm pretty much okay here. Because as you've now you painted some of your lines could be a little bit 
a little too light now and they'll disappear on you. So I'm going to just make sure I've got that outline of a dress sorted over there. The rest we can shoot out to eyeball. Alrighty, so for that sky I'm going to take some French ultramarine. So let's maybe go Let's maybe go to there. So I'll put some French ultramarine down. We're going to need a fair amount of that, eh? Because we're going to cover most of the canvas with that. So I'll put a, a decent dollop of that down. And then we always need plenty of white. So I'll put a decent dollop of that down over there as well yeah that should get us going so we can see it's it's darker on the one side and lighter on the other side so let's take some titanium white just a little bit of ultramarine in there for a start. Let's make sure we are getting in that ballpark. Yeah, it does seem to be the right color. So that's cool. I'll do that for the for the one side. And then we'll need to just darken him up for the other side. So while we're at it, we may as well start working in just some painting medium as well. So the painting medium I'm using today is just uh, the Archival Oils Odorless Classic. And I'll just take my dropper and just lift that as much is what he can take then I can close my bottle up because these uh, the medium will dry out if you leave the bottle open so you want to keep him as closed as much as possible awesome let's get the next color So this time we'll be a bit more generous with the with the ultramarine. So I'm just getting a few drops in there at the same time of the medium. That way we mix and and set him down in one shot, in one go. Fabulous, guys! If you are enjoying the lesson, please like the video. That way YouTube knows that other people will get value from the class as well. All right, so I'm going to take just my, my bristle brush. This is my, it's about a, a, a one inch roughly. Uh, let's see, how can I put these guys down so that they're nice and big for you? Yeah, let's maybe do that. Now, the most important thing here is to not go over that, that little, the shoreline on the other end. So I'm going to start by just getting that little edge over there in and I'm just going to just 
been quite generous with the paint just work that in there when you're painting an impressionistic style you can be quite generous with the paint don't don't be shy let the paints blend into each other and you can have some nice texture on the on the canvas as well so I can see from his brush strokes he's had to work in this direction over here so obviously he was right handed because they're in that same direction as what I'm putting them in there and because there's just that little bit of space here at the top of the canvas he, he, he couldn't blend like this he had to blend you know like that echoing effect in my voice. Is that happening for everybody else? I only have one mic. Let's see. Ah, okay. I see what. Okay, thank you guys. I'll switch that off. I can sort that out. And just need to speak for two seconds so that I can see which ones are it should be fixed now. Is, is it gone, uh, Arrow? Just double, con just confirm that for me. It should be gone. All right, so I'm going to take some of this, the darker one. And now we'll start it at this side over here. Let's just get that shoreline sorted over there. I set up a. I've changed the layout of my my palette. It's usually on the on the left hand side, and I've got him on the right hand side today. So I added a new sort of shot or a new view inside my broadcasting software, and I didn't switch off the the volume on that one. So that's probably the two microphones that you that you were hearing. Oh, sorry about that. As far as I can see, that should be the only one now. Alrighty, so you can see we've got a nice little flow across there like that. And a, and a bit of a a bit of a shading. Yeah, that extra sound from the, the palette should be gone now. Let me just do that to double check. Is, is it gone now, guys? All right, so I am using, I'm not using terps. I'm using uh, linseed oil as my medium. So before I wash the brush, I always have to get rid of all this excess over here. I don't want to dirty my my oil. I want to dirty it as little as possible. So if you want to know how I paint using the linseed oil instead of the, the terps, you can go and take a look on my YouTube channel. There is a there is a video there showing you how I do that. All right, let's get that little shoreline in. You can see his color is almost right, eh? So I think we'll we'll stick with the the burnt sienna then. So we can see it's quite um, 
if we take a look at where the, the sun is coming from, let me dump that um, pal palette for a second. Can you see over here? Let's dump that as well. Can you see over here? The, the, the sun is coming from the right to the left. But there, it's brighter there, and it's darker there. So that tells me it's, it's sort of, it's round like this. So these little hills over here are, are, are in more in shade. And as they curl around, the, they ca these guys over here are catching some sunlight. So that's why they have a bit of a, um, a bit of a shading to them over there. So let's take, yeah, let's take the burnt sienna and maybe, maybe some touch of cadmium yellow for that guy. We don't need much of it. It's just the thinnest little, little line. That does seem to have done the trick on that guy. And then for the far right end, I'm just going to take a little bit of blue, which is now the opposite color to the to the burnt sienna. And that was promptly way too much. <laughs> there we go. So that'll give us that little shading color over there. So that's cool. Happy with that. And then for on the other side, we'll just work less of our burnt sienna into the mix. So there we go. We've got our little, just a little bit of a shading over there. It almost seems like there's even just a tiny touch of white in there. Well, we'll see. We'll put it down and see how it looks. All right, so that is thinner. So I'm going to just use a, a smaller brush. Let's go for the, the one centimeter. I'm also right-handed, so I'm going to start on the left and work my way this way. Yeah, no, it definitely needs a bit of white, so I'll just nick a bit of white there and just work it into that, just to get that brightness going over there. That nice, beautiful sunlit effect. And then as we go across, we'll pick up some more of this burnt sienna. And that'll give us that more orangey kind of color. Now you can also see that he hasn't even tried to cover the the canvas fully. He's quite happy with having uh, some of that underpainting shining through. Let's see, from here it seems to go up like that. I don't know why those those sails are, are in behind the behind the water. Maybe there's like a lagoon or something going in over there that, that we that the bottom of the the boats have disappeared on us. Something also tells me that this painting was painted um in plain air. That's why you don't always have that perfect covering of the of the canvas because you have to paint really quickly. So I'm assuming the the girl is the self. You had to paint somewhat from from either from memory or back in the studio afterwards because uh, you you can't stop the wind <laughs> from from blowing the dress. You could still have a pose there for a minute. All right, yeah, that's, that seems to be good over there. So let's go and take a look at this water. 
that seems pretty complex, doesn't it? So I'm sure we could uh, paint that reasonably, reasonably quick. I think what we can do with that is if we look at the majority color, seems to be Let's move him up so I can point on this guy. The majority color seems to be this kind of a color here. Um, and then there's some lighter, sunnier bits of, of light. And then there's some darker bits as well. So let's concentrate on getting that that main color over there. I think this year seems to be about that um, that lighter color, and there are little, possibly little dabs of of this. So I'm going to take these guys and just store them one side. They're definitely usable. Great. Now let's get some. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring down a fair amount of this um, this ultramarine because we've got lots of canvas to cover now. And there are bold brush strokes. Let's get just a little bit of white into that. Let's be careful to not make him too light too quickly. See, that almost seems like that color in out here in, in this vicinity, eh? So let's put some of that over there. So we've already got that color. <laughs> if we've got it, let's keep it while I mix it again. So I'm just adding a bit more white into it. A little bit more, eh? Nearly there. And look there, we've got a beautiful progression between one, two, three, four colors over there. So what we need now is that one darker guy for those shadows. So let's see, let's get a bit more ultramarine over there. We don't need too much of that. I'll put some more down there for in case we need some. And to darken that, let's take some of this um, burnt sienna. He darkened it up really nicely over there, so let's do it again. Let's get some more burnt sienna there. Okay, it was almost a black. And that's pretty much what I'm seeing there, is it does seem to be a super dark blue, almost almost a black. So I'll put just, uh, just a touch in there for a start. Let's not go too hectic. And just see what happens. Yeah, look there, that just that little bit was enough. He's he's taken away that brightness of the ultramarine. But if I if I spread him out like this, can you see you still see the blue? But the pile of paint looks black. So that's exactly what we needed for that guy. Awesome. So I think let's use something a bit bigger. Let's go back to this half inch half inch brush for now and that's paint over there so what we did now not do is work in some painting medium in these guys i work in the painting medium a it spreads easier and then b the the paint dries quicker so i don't have to wait a, a year for this painting to dry before you can frame him and all those kinds of things now you'll be dry in a few days And for now, I'm keeping all the paints reasonably the same consistency. They're all just nice, like a margarine or a thick, a thick mayonnaise consistency. Because we're not painting any anything on one on top of the other, so we don't really need to go too thin. But we do want it nice. It must spread nice and easily onto the canvas in nice loose strokes if it was too thick you'd have to sort of paste it on all right so what i'm doing is i'm, I'm actually standing 
where I'd normally sit and paint, I'm standing today. Because when you're painting impressionistic, you're not painting like this, like you, you when you're painting details. You're painting, holding the brush much further back. And you're painting in nice, flowing strokes like this. And as you can see, you need to use good amounts of paint on the brush. Don't be shy with your paint today. So now what I am going to do here is just put these down in like really just little blotchy strokes. In this area, yeah, you can mostly fill everything up. Over there, I'm leaving just a few little gaps for those darks. And here, if, you care, if you're scared, you're going to go over the that little background over there. Then what you do is just clean your knife off. Make sure it's clean on both sides. And you put him down here, just like a temporary mask, like that. See that? Easy peasy. The only trick with that, though, is if you do now go and move, you, you want to pick your knife up and put him down in another spot to, to continue the line, you have to wipe your knife off on both sides and on the edge every single time every single time and I can see he's done it over there with uh, with the dark that edge is nice nice and sharp over there all right let's continue I can see I'm gonna have to make some more of my blue though yeah I'm gonna just leave myself a few little gaps So over here by the by the dress, just come in like this and work from the edge of the dress outwards. Really starting to get a little bit of a ripply effect, just with a little bit of um the background that's still shining through. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. Here I'm adding less because here's more of the, the lighter the lighter tonal values. Here I'm adding more because there's more of this this color. Yeah, and as we come down here, things change. So I think we'll let's let's just tackle this as a start, and we'll we'll continue with the other water separately, because there is now whole different techniques being used over there. So here's just little bits shining through in between the dark. That should be fine there, like that. Cool. Yeah, let's start adding in some of these these other colors. Here we've got those reflections from the the sails, so we can leave quite a bit of canvas empty over there. I think that's enough. And I'm not going to wash my brush or anything like that. I'll just wipe off the excess because we're just using a different version of the same color. So it's not 
it's not necessary to go and wash your brush. Just get the worst off so that when you do start with your new color, this existing paint that's on the brush is not going to overpower it. It'll just blend into the new color that you're using. All right, let's get some of this. And let's start adding some darker guys in. I can see some darker guys around this vicinity around here. So now I'm going to just work in little strokes. I think almost, if I check that out, it's going to be a little bit big. I'm going to go over to a, a smaller brush. Let's go for this guy over here, this fine round. That should give us nice, nice crisp marks here in this background. So what I am now obviously targeting are these little gaps. Where the background is shining through. So more often than not, and you as you do these little rabs and dabs, you are going to find that you'll naturally sort of do this, you know, this kind of a motion. It's not a straight line. It, it you do automatically tend to dip, and that does give you those little those little ripples on the water. There's quite a few of these little darker blues in this vicinity here as well. There does seem to be a little something there in between that sail and the and the boat. So yeah, we'll just keep targeting those little those little gaps. So that by the end of the day, we're going to have no, or almost no, underpainting visible. It will be gone. When you do go over existing paint, make sure that you have enough paint on the brush. There's no pressure. I'm painting with zero pressure on the brush. In actual fact, I'm holding it so loose in my hand. Look here. I'm, I'm barely holding this brush. Because I, I don't want to apply pressure. I want the paint to just flow off the brush because that's what's going to give me these nice beautiful loose strokes and, and the, the effect as well. Alright, let's see. We've still got some more dark work to do in this area over here. So let's continue. There's quite a bit in this, this vicinity. You'll find that as you do this, you, you tend to get yourself into a little bit of a, a little bit of a rhythm. Dawn, you can, if you uh, want to, if you need to leave and you need to want to watch this later, then just, uh, if you're logged into YouTube, you can just click the watch later, add it to your watch later list. Otherwise, you can uh, just make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can get back to it. You can do that. And then if you want to watch the, the edited version of the replay, where I've cut out all the tidied everything up and cut out all the, the stops and starts and stuff in between when I'm changing camera angles and goodies and get the, the updated versions of the, with the PDFs, the downloadable PDFs, you can do that on the website, which is onlineartlessons.com. Let me add that into the, 
into the chat box view, then you can just uh, click it. Alrighty, yeah, we're starting to get some nice little movement in the in the water. Hey, so you want to make sure that you get some of all these different colors everywhere. Because that's what happens. The water is doing this. It's rippling, right? And it's uh, doing this as well. So the water is reflecting all sorts of other, you know, all these different colors that are around it. The boat colors, the sky colors, the water colors. And then obviously you get places where the water is shining through as well. Just want to get this little with edge of that sail. I don't want to lose him now. Can't see his line anymore, so I'm just going to eyeball that in over there. Yeah, so this way you, you're getting all these different colors in different places. All right, let's go to the darkest one. We asked some of these guys in, in this vicinity over here as well. So just keep targeting all those little gaps that you've got. And you'd also, to get your perspective right, just use little shorter strokes here at the back. And then gradually make them longer as you come forward. And that way the, the waves will appear as though they're getting larger and larger. That should be enough over there. Let's get that that back edge over there. So I'll use my knife again. Right, so there's quite a bit of this dark over here. So I'm going to be quite bold with these strokes over here. Quite happy to go over existing paint. And make sure there's stuff going out of the picture to have continuity to tell your your brain there's stuff going on. This is not a it's not an isolated little scene. So I'm now just trying to get a a, a a reasonable, not a perfect likeness, but just roughly replicating the amount of darks and the amount of lights in the different areas. Just so that in the end of the day we get that that balance, that tonal value balance about right if we can do that then then i think we've we've done well as well whenever you're working from somebody else's stuff like this never try to replicate it brush stroke for brush stroke Unless of course you're a forger and you want to you want to sell it for a fortune, which I don't recommend. Okay, let's go over to the lighter guy. Let's get some of these guys in. So this is now the water that's reflecting the 
this the sun. So we've got more of them in this vicinity around here. Gradually getting more as we as we come down. And just so it's sort of narrow over there and it's widening out to this this direction. And because we're coming closer, you can also use nice, you know, much bigger br brush strokes. Okay, now we can add just a few of these guys also in these vicinities around here. Don't overdo it though, otherwise you, you mess up your, your balance of tonal value. Yeah, it does seem to be, even though that's a, a, a white sail, it does seem to be like this sky color that's reflecting in, in, in this vicinity around here. So we'll add some of that in over there. And there are just a few little dabs and dashes of this in, in around here as well. Yeah, and I think while we're at it, let's tackle those uh, those boats because then we can do the their reflections and get this back bit of water done and dusted. So the first thing we need to do is just let's wash this brush because I think he's going to work quite well for those sails and stuff in the back there. So just bear with me as I wash this. Awesome. Okay, let's take a look. We've got quite a bit of white, so we can take some neat white. Let's see if we can extricate some neat white between all that dirty blue there. Cool, let's take a look. Just lay down. The painter in nice, thick, broad brush strokes. Don't be shy with your paint. Yeah, in this style, I'm actually seeing just a tiny touch of yellow in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the paint and then just dab it into some um, some yellow. Not too bright, just a touch of yellow in that. So what that yellow does is it just gives it a bit of a, a sunny effect. Guys, thank you for liking the video. I really appreciate it.
And if you're watching the replay of this, please leave a comment below. Also, it helps YouTube know that the information you're getting here is worth showing to other people. Yeah, I'll just work in that, that medium. Just nice and loose like that. So what we do need to do now is just get some some of this background back in here again. And that's also why I keep all my colors. I don't, even though we're done with the sky, I don't chuck anything away. Because look there, we do now need just a little bit of it. There's a piece of little area that we've missed over there. So we'll fill that in over there. And it was roughly this color over here. I never throw any colors away until I've finished with the painting. And I can say with certainty, I've signed the painting. <laughs> I don't need any of these colors anymore. Yeah, let's maybe just add a just a suggestion of a, maybe that little wave that is continuing through here. So very carefully just add some some suggestion of, of movement in that little area over there. Yeah, awesome. Let's see. That guy calls around to meet up with the with the mast. And here we've got the the boat itself. So what you want to do is just paint this hole in one one broad stroke. Because if you had to try and go over it, it's so thin, it's going to definitely mix with the blues and stuff like that. So we can't put him in, in multiple brush strokes. So I'm going to load up the brush with plenty of paint, more than enough paint to do that hole the whole hull, <laughs> or the whole boat, in one go. So press hard over here, and I'm just going to lay off on the pressure. Yeah, that should do the trick over there. All right, let's see where else can we... Yeah, there's a light sail over there. And he's also got a bit of bit of yellowiness to him. So I'm good on that. There's a bit of yellow over there. And then there's these guys that are coming around the corner. So my brush was becoming quite loaded with the paint, which made the, the, the hairs just spread out. So what I've done is I've just basically taken my, my I've got a, a scrap t-shirt here that I also just used to soak up oil and stuff. So what I've done is just put it, the bristles inside there, and I've just wiped it off like that, just to get rid of that excess paint. Because we do need to work a little bit finer for this. That dude at the back there, because he's quite, he's now quite far away. There. Cool. Now there's a variety of other colors there. Let's see, there's this dark. A dark color floating in this vicinity. So we've got him, so let's use him. Then there's a, a lighter version, so I'll just use the next one next one down. For those guys at the back there. I think my color is going to be a little bit darker than his, but 
I'm happy with that. I don't want them to. I want it to disappear. Or I don't want it to disappear. So that was there. This one seems to have a line there. And a little, a little bit of a line over there. And then there, I think what he's done is just nicked a little bit of... For we know, these boats are just imaginary as well. I think it's just nicked a little bit of burnt sienna and stuff. Just mixed a little impromptu colour. Because it is a bit of a like pinky purpley kind of colour. Maybe we'll now introduce a bit of cadmium red. Yeah, there we go. That's that's giving us what we need. There seems to be a splash of that in this area, so I'm going to just take that and mix it into the blue. Like I say, well, this doesn't need to be perfect like his, or identical to his. Okay, so what I did over there is just straighten out that sail so that it's... And then there's... Bit of a lighter guy over here. There must have been some marks on this cell. Multiple, multiple designs. There, there we go. Okay, let's get our water in in between. Yeah, so yeah, it's just a little bit of fine detail work that we need to do for a few seconds. Okay, let's get some white. Do this boat. So again, just try and do him in, in one stroke like this. If you do have to do them in multiple strokes, just clean your brush in between each stroke. Yeah, you know, we can now we can do that. Uh, those reflections. They seem to be quite orangey, so I'm just going to just grab some of these colors that we now have here already. And just get that yellowy, orangey kind of, kind of color. And if I forget it, please remind me that we do the mast. I mustn't forget the mast on these on this boat over there. Yeah, just nice little loose strokes like this. Nice loose strokes.
So what happens with the reflections, they're, they're quite close to each other here against the object, in this case the boat. But then as you go further away, those little um, reflections also go further and further apart. So just gradually start giving yourself more and more distance between these guys, like that. Awesome. Right, let's see. There seems to be just a little bit of brown or orangey kind of color running along there like that. Just to separate those guys. And then while well, I've got that brown color on the brush, let's take that and let's add this. That masked in over there. Yeah, he's good to go. And I'm not seeing any shadings or anything on these sails. They're all just blocked in and, and left as is. There yeah, just seems to be a little bit. You've got this, this blue here that's reflecting in between those sails. So I'm just adding a few little extra over there just to separate this sail from that sail. Alrighty, that was easy enough. Sending one or two of these guys over here. Okay, so I think let's flip this around and let's start working on that, the water underneath. So we'll pop that guy over there and let's see what's going on here. All right, so can you see in this area over here, you, you're starting to see more of the, um, the sand color that's shining through. So that's going to be our, our underpainted color. So it's more um, vibrant and more orangey in, in real life than what I'm seeing it on the, on the screen. So I think we should be okay. And, uh, and it does seem to be this color over here. More of this. And then just there, there's, there's some, some shadows and stuff. So here we're going to work a, l a little bit different. We're going to put our paint down and just leave little areas of the of the orangey colors just shining through of our burnt sienna so just use like a bit of a, a bit of a scribbling motion and now that I see it yeah I haven't got it quite up to that that dress over there you want to make sure that as you go along, you've got that edge of that dress correct. The water is also sort of rippling in this area here. Let's see. I just want to see if I can show that to you. Let's go there. And let's go out. Can you see? Here, there's a ripple running like this. Here, there's ripples running like this. 
as this water is being moved by her movement and the boat's movement. You've got that rippling going out there like that. So we want to get that same effect ourselves. Let's just go there. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to work on this. And as I go, I'm going to take it. Follow it around. like that there's the next little ripple over there and there's the next ripple in that area over there Then as we come to around here, it does seem to be more in shadow. So I'm using this darker version. And can you see where I'm holding the brush? Just nice little... Nice little flowing strokes. Okay, well we've got this darker guy on the on the brush. Let's work on these areas over here. Because this is now the, the shadow colour. What you also want to do is if you're running out of paint now, like like I am, don't be don't be lazy. Mix more paint. When you're working um impressionistic, you you're working with thicker layers of paint. Now when I do mix a new layer of paint, I'm not going to mix it straight into all of that. I'm going to mix it down here. And that way I can see whether I've got the correct color or not. Because I can compare this new color to the existing one. And when I mix them in and until eventually I see they look the same. And when they do look the same, now I can bring them all together to form one Awesome. Okay, I think while we're at it, we may as well be uh, be proactive. Let's get these little little water reflections in over there. So just to show those reflections, it's just squiggles.
Okay, let's go over to the lighter colors again. Okay, so here we do need to now start adding some distinct some distinct browns in. Because that's now not uh, underpainting anymore, it's it's more more vibrant than that. Yes, he is just no, just tiny little bits in these little ripples, small little bits of, of of the of the water, the sky color that we can see over here. I think almost there. We need to first put in some of these darker guys now, eh? So let's go back up to the top. Let's continue then working there. Yeah, I can actually see he's done a stroke, the same as what we're having to do, yeah, to to fill that in. So he has clearly sketched this out. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done a, a stroke like that. He would have done that and then just painted the the boat in loose. So maybe what happened was he, he painted this top area first in plain air, and then he came back in and. Uh, And painted this. Either that, we just sketched it out loosely onto the canvas, right there and then before he started painting. Here's other also just little darker ground colors over there. So I'm not going to make that too too solid there. Here we have some of this. It's also still just more of it curling around here. Just to gradually start forming that, those, those ripples. Starting to get a little bit of a ripply effect here, eh? With a little bit of imagination, we can, we can picture it. Yeah, cool. I think let's start getting ourselves some of that darker, the darker sandy color in. So I'm going to clean the brush, like full on washing him. Because now we need to go over to some browns. So you do the same. Give your washes a good old your <laughs> your washes a brush. <laughs> Give your brushes a wash so that you can start fresh. So at this stage, I have no dirty no dirty brushes anymore. Let's get some more burnt in over there. And if I look over here, this is definitely as good as neat burnt sienna. So I'll be quite happy working with neat burnt sienna there for a while. So what we'll do is we'll bring some of this burnt sienna down to say this area of here, just so we can get some some medium into it. Just just a few drops. Keep it the same consistency as all the other paint.
Adam is saying I noticed some painters hold several brushes for light and dark colors. Yes, yes, you'd sort of if you're working if you're changing colors often, then you would do this. You'd have the one color, next color. So you're just holding them like this. But here we we pretty much working with one color at a time, so it's not really not really necessary to do that. Alrighty. Yeah, I think let's stick with this this smaller uh, bristle brush. He seems to be doing doing his thing for us today. Pick up some of that neat burnt sienna, and let's see if we can get this this leg reflection in here. So as you do, just squiggle him down. I think I've made mine a little bit too thin. Just if you make it too thin, what happens is your the paint leaves like those strokes. You can see the brush strokes inside there, and that's not what we're looking for today. We want nice thick paint. So now here, this is where our painting is going to definitely not conform to, to his. You can try and get it similar, but it's never going to conform to his because we need to use just um, wiggling and squiggling strokes like this. So it's never going to look identical. As long as we can get it to look similar, that's... That's all good. So I am not going to try and get mine reasonably similar just so that you've got a A good reference to 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 work from. Yes, quite a lot of quite a lot of brown, yeah. So chances are you'd probably find he was also pretty much just doing his own thing over here because I mean the water moves you you can't you can't make water stand still <laughs> to to really study what you need to do and to get it looking exact. So he was definitely also just doing his own thing over here. Yeah, that's great. I'm happy with that. All right, so here at the back, I'm going to add some of this in, but not as much paint. I'm just going to, the little bits that are left on my brush, I'm going to work in here. Just so that we can get some variety of tonal, tonal value and less of the, the raw underpainting shining through. There's a little bit more of it. So almost, you know, with, with, um, 
With impressionistic painting, you generally don't do blending. But here we can do just a little bit of blending. Just to show that the, the waves are doing this. But like I say, try and blend as little as possible. And while you do, just make sure you're getting nicely up to against the the dress and the legs and all those things. Okay, there's more whites and stuff. So we can leave that. Here we can add a little bit more. We have that. That reflection is going to come around this vicinity around here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of these these browns in over there, like that. There's also whites, there's whites here, just a little bit over there. I think that's good enough. Hope I haven't missed anything. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to wash the brush so that we can go back to blue. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. What do you think? Should we go and uh, get some whites in there as well? Then at least most of that that canvas will be will be full, and it'll be easier for us to judge what we need where. I think so. Right, so same as before. I'm going to just clean the brush. Let's get some white down there and some medium into it. Not too much. And I can see most of these colors aren't perfectly clean or white in this area either. So I think what's happened is he's also done a little bit of blending in some of them. He's picked up a bit of brown here and there and so on. And that's probably what's going to happen when we add these colors in here too. We're going to pick up some blues and browns or whatever. So as you do pick up paint, just every now and again, just wipe off your brush. You can see I'm doing it on the side there on the palette. Just so that you do keep your colors reasonably, reasonably clean as best you can. Because you do want to go over the, the adjacent colors. 
because that's when that you get that um, that thing of the colors just merging into each other and showing you that nice wet look. You can also wipe it off on your on your paper towel like this. Let's get a bit more white. Are you enjoying yourself so far? And if you're painting with, let me know as well. Let me know in the chat box if you're enjoying the class. Let's see there, we've got, for some reason, some white over there, I would have expected, maybe this is her dress, oh, okay, yes, we've got a bit of leg uh, reflection over there, and then dress, I always try and figure out, you know, what am I, what am I actually painting, and, and try and get, get those things correct, Because then at least in the end of the day, these kind of things make sense. Yeah, here I can see there was definitely some, some blending and mixing and stuff happening. All this here was definitely all painted in one go. Here's a bit of like a bit of a browny gray kind of color, so I'll just steal some gray kind of colors that we've already got here. And we'll just sneak it in there. Let's see, around this vicinity it's not quite white anymore, it's more little bits of sky color still. So I'm going to just keep working in some of those sky colors over there. was kind of just working to get rid of that that white of the canvas there. It's possibly even a little bit purpley, so I'm gonna just steal just a tiny touch of of red. Just to purple up that blue a bit. Or just grey that blue down a bit. We don't need much of it, and that's why I'm just quickly doing a an impromptu mix. Let's take a look. There's more of that around here. Again, I'm being very careful to come right up to against the, the boat and stuff. Famous last words. <laughs> we'll see if I have done that. <laughs> I always say I'm doing that, and then I, when I when I get to the to the crunch time when I paint the boat or whatever and then I'm, uh, I've missed. Yeah, there's definitely a few little 
those grey kind of strokes in this vicinity. I think that's fine. All right, let's make sure we've got all our, our canvas covered there where it needs to be. We've got our boat nicely outlined. I think I'm going to just get rid of the the palette for a while, just so that we can see the the overall view. Because now we we can't see that in between that transition area. So for that transition, I think I'm going to go back to the this brush that we were using for the water up there, because now we want to go from this through to that. So I'll just pick up some of that paint and just add some of these strokes in here, but gradually less and less. So that we do have like that, that little bit of a transition happening over there. Oh, let's do the trick. Alrighty, let's take a look. Let's do it on the other side. And we also need to just get a few little darker bits in. Where else around here, right? Eh? Yeah, this is, I think this is like her shadow that's been cast. She even used up some of the darker blue over here. Okay, yeah, here we're also just making sure we're getting all the way up to the dress and the legs. So we've got those silhouetted. Where else? Over here. That leg ends over there. So that should be fine over there. There we've got that little bit of a Just that little bit of skin tone over there. For that, we'll need orange. So when we do the the body and the hair and stuff, we'll mix that color. Um, Adam is asking if the is the reflection of the sailboat intentionally painted wrong. No, the sailboat is at an angle. Can you see? It's not. It's not upright. Like this, is is at an angle like that. So that's why you've got. Yes, I, I see what you mean. Yes, you would expect the because it's a it's a mirror image. Eh? You would expect it to be like that. Maybe you uh, our theory of him painting um, this little part here in in back at the studio could be correct. And and that's why he that's why he got that wrong. You you're hundred percent correct. Okay, let's get some of these little bits of brown here. So my only mission now at this stage is just to make sure we've got all the all the canvas nicely covered. Or well, mostly covered at least. So there aren't so many so there isn't really any um, uh, 
there isn't much of the, the background still shining through there. Alrighty, so I think it is now time to introduce a new color and that's the, the orange that we need to get the skin tone right. Because we can see now it's not just burnt sienna and, and, and maybe a bit of cadmium yellow in it. That's not working. So what we're going to have to do is just introduce at this late stage that new color. Yeah, I think so far we're not doing too shabby a job, eh? As long as we don't blow it now. <laughs> right, so for that I'm going to take some orange. Let's put it down, let's say over there, and let's get some uh, burnt sienna. Let's get some white. And we will need yellow, so I'll nick, nick some yellow as well. That's not better, right? Eh? Alright, let's get some of that. Just some of that skin tone in here. And then from there we can reflect it. Then that reflection will now make sense. See that one goes out of the picture. That one sort of stops there. And that one stops even shorter. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave that at that, otherwise I'm going to just start fiddling. And look at that, there's also a new colour. The, the hull of that boat has got some green in it. So it was first originally that. There's some browns there. Then I think he maybe changed his mind. So we can we can do the same. I'll take a bit of blue and into the into the yellow. So it is a reasonably dark, almost like an emeraldy green. So as far as possible, what the impressionists did used to do was use just primary colours. So the the pure way of painting in Impressionistic is you would use only the primary colors and those little strokes that you make to paint it would then optically blend with each other to form the the color mixes in your eye but in practical in theory I found very few of the 
the guys actually did that simply because it was just too difficult. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It wasn't as effective. You just simply don't get all the colors just by trying to get your eye to optically blend them unless those little marks that you're making are insanely small. All right, where do we need to go now? White. Let's do the sails of the boat. So even the original impressionists, like Monet and Manet and all those guys, they also mixed colors. So I'm working on the edge, and then from there, it's just a few little strokes to to quickly cover him up. We'll do the same with all the other guys. Nice bold strokes to get the the outsides done, and nice and crisp. And then from there, just a few quick strokes to to block in the insides. So it seems like around here, he put this in and maybe the color started blending or something. Or maybe you just wanted to get a, it to look like it's curling or turning. And that's why it's just added a little bit of a little bit of shading into this. I think he picked up some of the, the color and then it was blending so much and then he said, Oh no, stop, clean the brush. Who knows? Who knows what his thinking was over there? Anyway, there's that. Yeah, no, he was definitely shading it. I can see now it's... Uh, I'm having to be quite quite purposeful to get those similar colors. So now he was definitely trying to get this thing to look like it's, it's rounded a bit. Yeah, that's great. Well done. I think he did manage to get a rounding over there and he, he did have to play a little bit to get those those mixes right. Because these paints are so so thick on the canvas already. Alrighty, let's get those uh masts in. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of yellow into that that skin tone mix. So let's get some more yellow into the picture here. So it's sort of a, a, a yellowy brown. And that's quite thin. I think I'm going to use a, a rigger brush. So 
So when you are working with a rigger brush, you need to make sure that your your paint is nice and thin so that it can flow off the brush because you can't press hard with a rigger brush. And besides, if you do, you're going to lose all your uh, all your fine detail because then those lines are just going to spread out. Yeah. That seems to be from around there, eh? So now before you put your masks in, make sure that you're happy with the background. So once you've put the background in, or once you put the masks in, you can't fiddle with the background anymore. Just darkening it up because there wasn't enough contrast between the mast itself and the and the sail. Do the same over there. And look there, I forgot that little white piece in there, so I need to do that still. Here's that guy, and he did have a little bit of a... He did add a little bit of rigging over there. I think I'm just going to stick with this. Just put this guy in. Yeah, it seems about it. Alrighty, so we're definitely in the home stretch now. Alright, so to do that, that dress and stuff of us, there's lots of white that we need to use, eh? So I think what I need to do here is just clean off some of this palette because we're guaranteed to pick up dirty colors if we don't. So I think we need to do just a little bit of a, a, a reset here. So I'll clean off all the excess stuff and we're pretty much done with the sky colors and the water colors, but I'm not getting rid of them. I'm just gonna put them one side because how do we know we've gone all the way nicely up to the dress so I don't want to do last little final touch-ups and stuff. So just put them one side. Let's see, that is a whitish color, so I'll leave him there. And there's sort of my orange. I can put him back there. All of this here can go for now. So 
So you'd want to do the same if you've got another pallet. That's obviously now a quicker option. Okay, so I've got most of that cleaned off over there for now. I'll just dip him into the into the oil just to get some liquid over here. Just so that we can mop up this last little bit. And we should be able to work with some nice beautiful neat whites and stuff. Let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. That's good enough. All right, so all that stuff there is like seriously dirty. So I'll start with a new, a new batch of white. And I can see it's not 100% pure white. There's definitely a little bit of yellow in it. So I'm going to take just a tiny speck. Can you see there? It's next to nothing. And I'm going to take that next to nothing and I'm going to put it down there so that I have even less than nothing. And I'm going to work that into this. White discolors insanely quickly. So you have to be super que careful when um, adding colors to it that are, and you want to have it just off white. Okay, now I can steal just a little bit more of that. And a little bit more at a time until I'm happy. So I'm working on a white tile, so that gives me a nice reference. All right, so now I can see I can add all of that initial batch in. So that's that. And why do you add this little bit? Yes, it does give you that nice sunny look. But it also allows you then to highlight your whites. And you'll be surprised, you can go sometimes surprisingly, surprisingly dark. And it will still look perfectly white. Right, so can you see there's a distinct difference now between that and the, and the palette. So I know now I've got enough. You'll be visible. Because I can see now on the, even on his painting, there are areas that he's definitely added even more yellow into it. So I just have two brushes that I need to quickly wash as well while I'm at it. Just to fully reset everything. My oil is getting a good workout today. It's quite dirty already. I think that is now mostly from the from the blues. There we go. And then we've got some greys. So what we can do is let's take some... We know now how to mix our grey. At this late stage we don't particularly want to be using any new colours. So I'm going to take uh, some ultramarine. I don't think we'll need tons of it. Let's take some of that. Burnt sienna. And let's gradually mix up a grey here. And it does seem to be a bit of a purpley grey, so he's added some red into it as well. A good way of getting a grey that mixes well or looks good for the opposite of white, or, sh or white shadow colour, is you take your three primary colours and you mix them together. In a roughly 
3 2 1 ratio of blue then red then yellow so lots of blue half that amount of red and half that amount of yellow that also gives you a, a really nice a really nice shadow color okay so i think that's good for there let's go and sort out those skin tones as well while we add it so let's put down the the reference photo over there So the base there is definitely, definitely burnt sienna. Eh? If I look at those, like sort of central areas there, but the path over here. So we've got that, and then there's some darker bits. So we can take some blue into that, and that's going to give us the darker bits. We don't need tons of that. And then there's the lighter bits, which is a bit more orangey. So I'm going to take some orange and some yellow into that. It's a little too much. Seems to be that. And then there's a highlight, which is a lot more yellowy. So let's take some yellow. Just a little bit of burnt sienna in it, almost just what's on the knife. And let's see what does it give us. It does seem to be more or less that color, to be honest. All right, so let's stick with that. We can always fiddle with him a little bit more as we go possibly add just a touch of white and just a speck of orange just for warmth alrighty I think we'll start with the dress because that's quite quite large Let's go back to here. I mean, just give me a second to get my, my overlays laid out nicely for you again. Okay, that's good. Where can I put the palette? So I think for now, let's put the, the girl over there and the palette over there. There, yeah, like that. Awesome. It's a medium into each of these guys. I hope I've mixed enough dark. Something tells me I haven't. <laughs> we'll soon see. Alrighty. I think let's go back to a nice big brush again. We'll we'll, we'll tackle this guy. So I can see that these lighter strokes over here, they're definitely coming over the over the gray. Can you see that? Because these ones are very distinct, where the grays are not. They seem to be just quite plain. 
So I think that's what he's done. He's, he's taken this and just formed the the basic shape slash silhouette. Using the gray. Now as you do, form this little silhouette. Don't forget to give it these little wiggles and squiggles here on the edge. And the same thing here by the her sleeve is sort of running up around here like this. That's what's happening over there. I see now. So you can see I am working a little bit of white into this gray of mine. I found my gray was just a little bit too dark. Those are the kind of things you often only see once you've put it on the onto the canvas. Then you notice. So what I am going to do is I'm going to just leave myself a little bit of the the background shining through just so that I can know where those little original strokes of his went so we can get us looking similar. Okay, here it's all pretty much solid, so I'm going to just block this in. Don't forget to give it little wiggles and squiggles to show that it's, you know, the this dress is now blowing in the wind. And here's again, it's it's pretty much white, so I don't think I'm going to bother do that because otherwise you're just going to have to layer a ton of white to try and cover all that gray. So we'll just work in these little um, shadows over here. And these shadows on this side, because they're on the sun side, have a little bit more yellow in it. He's, he's just stolen a bit of that yellow and he's just worked it in there to have a, a warmer shadow than on the other side. You see that? Where this side here has got more of the the red in it. And I can see all this is put in with really quick quick strokes. You want it to be nice and flowing. Okay, I think while we add it, let's put in some of these little shadows that are floating around this vicinity. I've lost my lines here a little bit, so I'm going to do my best to get them, get everything into the right, right place. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And there's some, some greys coming down here because her, her hand is casting a shadow. So that needs to be quite dark over there because it's right up against the dress and then we can go lighter because that's what happens with a shadow it starts off dark against the object and then it lightens up as we go further away I don't know about you, I'm really enjoying this painting, it's great fun. I, I tend to paint a lot tighter, so just loosening up a little bit here is really nice, really, really nice. And not fussing about so much details and stuff. There seems to be a, just a little bit of a, a little bit of a shadow, so that there was a bit of a, a kink in the material like this. As it as it flowed and as it kinked in like that, it gave you that little bit of a little bit of a shadow over there. 
Ah, well, we got this color on the brush, eh? So let's see. We've got her arm over there and this nice frilly little sleeves that are waving in the... Waving in the air around this vicinity over here. It comes right up against her face, which seems to be... So I've now lost my lines here. So I'm going to have to eyeball that whole facial area. Seems to be around there. And there's some hairs and looks like little ponytails or something in her hair there. Little bow ties. And then here in front of the face as well, you've got some, some of the dress as well. And then you've got the, the actual the ponytail itself. Hangs out around there. So the shadow comes still against the against the hand. Yeah, there we go. That's I think that's okay. The rest will be able to figure out. <laughs> that was quite a quite an abstract looking piece that we had to paint now, eh? Yeah. Right, so let's make sure we know where is the edge of this where does the the body and the and the dress part meet? Let's make sure we know about where's that. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of just of that little bit of a like a silhouette you could say over there. I'll add some greys over here. That's fine. Alrighty, so now we need to add nice, bold, broad strokes to get that outside dress area sorted, eh? So I'm going to go back to, to this guy that we used for the water. And let's pick up a good amount on the brush. But now the way I'm picking it up is like this. I'm dragging the brush through there, turning it 180 degrees, and then dragging it through the paint again. So look what happens. You've got like a, a bit of a chisel point. And as well, if the if the paint is too thick, then you'd also have to come back in now and, and just thin it down. You want this paint to flow off the brush. I'm not going to use a rigger just simply because it's it's too the, the hairs are too long and too soft. Um, if you did want to use, you could also use just a smaller version of this guy. So if this guy is not going to work for me, then I'll go over to using this guy over here. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's start by just creating that little edge over there. And I'm just going to eyeball these guys in. And now remember to work quite just quick and flowing. Don't overthink it. Just get them flowing. If I see here is is the paint tapered off, so he was actually working in this direction over here, like this. And then it tapered off. After each stroke, you've got to pick up new paint. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I, I queued it up and I forgot to click the button. 
Okay, so what I've done here is I've just here his paint is sort of you can see it, it ran out. So he's he's worked from the inside outwards like this. And put nice loose flowing strokes. Luckily there's there's still plenty to do, so you won't miss anything. Can you see I'm using just very very bold strokes from the inside out like this Here at the back, mine is looking just a little bit too spotty dotty. The, um, so I'm just going to fill up that end over there just to get that that top edge fine, uh, more more defined. That's fine. Like I say, remember to make it nice and squiggly like that. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so let's continue over here. Well, this is light, so I'm going to just put this in there it goes darker to that side so we'll stop there go around the edge of her head what I am doing here though is just sticking to the, the directions that I see You want these the uh, brush strokes to follow the the flare and and the and the waviness of the dress because that's what's now going to give you this lovely movement. Very light touch. You want the paint to do all the work for you. And you can see I'm leaving just tiny little gaps of um, canvas. Just tiny little gaps open. So that we can uh, see where those little lines and stuff, the pattern on the dress needs to go. So here I'm adding just a little bit of, a little bit of shading work. Just to round off that edge over there nicely. Don't be shy to let these guys sort of flow into each other. Alrighty, let's see. Here we've got that the sleeve. And then we've got some hair hanging over it. So this whole area over here is is solid. So that there go is going darker. So I don't want to wash the brush at this stage. So what I'm going to do is just wipe the excess paint off the brush. And I'm going to go into this dark. So it is now still a little bit sort of a mid-tone color. So I'll start that and just get this little bit of a, a shading in over there with that color that is now on the brush. And then as I go back into this dark, now there's less of the light and more of the dark on it. So now the dark will start dominating the mixture on the brush.
And that's going to now allow me to get this in over there. Very light touch on the brush. Absolutely no pressure whatsoever. So I can see he's a little bit bluer than mine. My color isn't 100%, but that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okie dokie, let's see. The other side of that sleeve over there is a bit more yellowy, so I'm going to pick up some of this yellow that we have over here from earlier. I'll pop that in, and I am seeing these bits of yellows at several places around here. Over there, and here's some greys on this sleeve. like that until it meets the until it meets the hair over there and this here also does have just a few little lighter bits in it so I'll just add some of that lighter in there Yeah, I think I'll keep that side lighter and this side a bit darker. Just to show that the light's coming from in, in this direction like that. So this here is in shadow, but that there is not. Then to keep this, yeah, also interesting. I've just a little bit of paint that's left on my brush. I'm just going to work one or two little goodies in there. Just so that's not flat. Alrighty, let's see. So this year was added in there. I think that's a little bit of artistic license over there because can you see you can't see where the body ends and the, the flaring of the dress starts. So and and it would be make sense because the light is coming from that side. So I think that's why he's just added that in over there just to define that over there like that. Yeah, there you go. Now, now you can see where where is that? Where does the dress start and the and the body part of it end? Hey, let's see. Here yeah, still needs to cover up some canvas. There's too much, too much white over there, or too much uh, background shining through. Now we can go over to the rigger brush and add these little. Uh, these little lines and things. So for that, we need to darken this up. Oh, <laughs> it just came shooting out. Don't want that much. Okay, so I'm gonna. I want it really thin, so I'm gonna dip my brush just inside that um, medium over there, and then mix it into the paint inside the pile. So it's mainly only the paint that's on my brush that is now so thin. Right, so now we're gonna just add in these lines. Am I going to try and get them exactly like his? No, of course not. It's going to be impossible. I'm just going to try and get them in, in a in a similar place and in a similar um, using a similar motion. Can you see? He's got like little wiggles and squiggles because that's not showing you the the movement of the of the fabric that it's not straight this guy's here is quite light so i'm wiping off the excess just on the e edge over there 
And you can also do it, just tap it on your on your paper towel to get rid of that excess. So you've just got a little bit of paint on there. Let's see, maybe, yeah, I'll just add like an odd one or two. Because obviously it is here in, in this area as well. Then here on the body, this is going to show us the shape. So here you would need to work reasonably accurate to get these, these directions right. Yeah, he hasn't added too many of these little of these little lines. I think maybe what had happened was he, he lost his uh, lines a little bit. I'm actually going to use my artist license just to add a few, a suggestion of them in over here. Otherwise, it's going to look odd that you don't have any of these marks and these or the pattern inside the dress in that area. Alrighty, nearly done. Cool. Let's paint the, the the hair and all those things. So for that, we definitely use a, the the smaller one of of these guys. Definitely the smaller one of him. So it's pretty complicated. If you're looking at all these little shadings on their own. Because you've got that old path and stuff. So wha what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try and paint all those individual things. What you want to do is just look at look at that as colors and stuff. So let's start off over here. And let's just get just some of these shapes right. In other words, I'm dealing with these these colors as though they're shapes. And I'm painting it in the direction that her hairs lie on the head. Let's just get some neat burnt sienna here as well. Just so that I can I want to dip into that because I, I see this color of mine is quite is very dark. And I want to just bring a little bit of color into that. Give me a second. I'm going to... Yeah, I think that camera is set up okay for that. Give me a second. I'm going to show us a closer view of this. Let's go there. So I'm literally just 
thinking of these as blocks of abstract colors, I'm ignoring the fact that it's a it belongs to a face or a head. So I'll do that outside bit afterwards. Let's just get this sorted. See, there's a little bit of dark over there too. Which curls in around here. So all I'm interested in is just getting right colors, right places. And I can see that there is brush strokes in the directions of the hairs. So I'm going to do the same thing. Do my best to to get these directions correct. All going well. We'll end up with a head of air shortly. <laughs> if we don't, we'll go back to square one of figure something else out there. That's the way it works with painting. You don't always get the effect that you want. You think you're going to get it. And if you don't, well, then you just try something else. I think we're nearly in in this color in all its places. Just keep at it. Yeah, there's a nice little highlight running down there. That's cool. I'm happy with that. Here, I think over here, let's get that highlight in. Because we now can't quite, well, I can't quite figure out where is what. So I'm going to just take some of the highlight color, and I can see it's definitely in this area over here. Yeah, there we go. So that's now helped me see where do I need to bring in all the other colors. Where do they, how far do they need to come? So while I've got this, I may as well do his. Bring him in using the lines. And I can see it comes in over here. And there's a little bit of it in that vicinity. Awesome. When I've got a, a, a color on the brush, I always try and see if there are other places that I can I could bring it in. Where you know, where does it belong? So one or two little lighter guys over there. For example, it's also well done in this vicinity over here. So while I've got that, uh, you know, s otherwise I have to keep washing the brush to to add it in down here later. So what the heck? I've got it on the brush. I'll put it in. Seems to be some of it hanging around here as well. Yeah, there's all sorts of bows and stuff. 
I think that's that's where we've got that color. So now we can go back to adding in all these other guys. Let's go to the dark one. I can see this dark needs to come all the way up to here. Like this. Yeah, and this is just a bit of a, a mix and match between the other ones. Okay, let's get these guys worked into each other. At the moment, I'm using literally just like little light taps. Just the lightest little touch. I think his paint maybe also had a little bit more red in it than what mine has. So if you're looking to get this color a bit more exact, add a little bit more red into your, possibly even a little bit of crimson, into that hair color over there. Let's see if we can just zhuzh up that, <laughs> up this, this color here a little bit more. Give it a bit more oomph. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, just a little bit more red in it than what I initially had. Okay, let's round off that little bit of dark over there. And there's still more of this red in this vicinity here as well. Just, just touches of it. So I think over here is probably more like a skin tone. I think that's her face. So I'm going to take white and burn sienna. Just a tiny touch of tiny touch of orange and yellow. You don't need too much of it in this vicinity and it's different to the other one so Let's get that in. It does seem like a little nose over there. And then from there, everything just goes gradually darker. So I'll just mix more and more of the, the burnt sienna and French ultramarine little mixture. Maybe we know that there, there is some more red in this. I'm going to add a touch more red into this as well. Just to keep this also just a little bit brighter. A little bit warmer.
Okay, and I'm just gradually pushing it a little bit narrower and narrower and narrower until until it seems to be about the same. It's a tough little part. This, if you're battling with it, don't don't feel too bad. <laughs> it is quite tricky. And then there's a little bit of dark just over there. But also don't kill yourself because this is not a part that you're actually looking at. You're looking more at the the dress and the and the boat. They the stars of the show in 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 this painting. Awesome. Let's get ourselves some some bow ties done. So that was yellow and French ultramarine. And again, we just need a tiny amount. That's the same color as what we used on the boat. Aha. Uh -huh. That makes sense. So he added these two he added that color into the boat. Remember I said earlier it seems like he's added in afterwards as an afterthought? And I think that's exactly what happened. He painted this, the bow ties, or the yeah, the bow ties or whatever it is you want to call it inside the inside the the hair, the ponytail or bits. And then he thought, you know what? If I take some of that and I add it to the boat, then you've got, you've tied the two together. You've got that color harmony between the two. Okay, so I'm now gradually just lightening this up a little bit. It's a bit lighter than what I currently have it. Where is that around this vicinity? Yeah, I think I'm putting it in a little bit too high as well. I say I've lost my lines, yes, I'm I'm judging these guys. It is a bit of green over there, so I'm, I'm happy with that. It's not a totally in the wrong place. And then we've got some of this lighter also just running along there and down here like that. There, and then here's a little piece that's even more yellow. It's almost just like a little bit of neat yellow, just picked up on the brush and popped in over there. Okay, let's clean that green off and go back to the brown. Because we do now need to just get this tie in over here. So I'm not just trying to get these tonal values and stuff similar. But not necessarily the actual not necessarily the actual colours. The tonal values are the ones that are more important because they they're the ones that give you the shape. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so now I'm just looking to see is there any little bits that I've now missed and so on. Like, for example, in this vicinity here, there's now some dark, some of the darker hair. In other words, it's dark hair and then it hit, hits the sun and then it appears brighter. And there's some more of it over here. So 
So this hand here is in shadow, and you can see it's added zero detail to it. It just blocked it in. So I'm literally using just neat bone sienna. I'm just going to block in that shape of the hand. Because when I can't see any details, Yeah, it seems to be there like that. And then there's just one or two little lines that are now showing that pattern on the dress over there. All right, let's stand back and see what it looks like. Yeah, there we go. All right, so let's take just the, the rigor brushing as we've got it in hand, but I'm going to take some of this lighter hair color and just add one or two little just one or two little lines that are now crossing the other guys, and that's going to just suggest the detail in the hair. Just to get it that little bit more stripey effect. Don't overdo it. Just a little bit. Cool bananas. All right, so what have we still got to do? Literally just the arms and the, the arm the legs and maybe just a little bit of touch up i see a little bit of gap still there all right so where do we need to go let's take that palette and we let's pop him in that corner now and we'll stick with this small little brush that we've been doing the hair with i'm gonna get myself just some more dark he's disappeared on me he's finished And we're also going to need just some neat burnt sienna. Because that is now our main skin tone. Alrighty, we'll start with the back leg and just pop that in over there. So yeah, he has now had to do a little bit of shading. Now to show that there's a difference between, you know, the separation between these two legs, because they're so close. And that one, this one is casting a shadow on that one. So this shadow side of this leg and the shadow side of that leg are similar. So he's used a classic little trick where you've made the shadow on this one the darkest bit here but then on this leg is made the darkest bit on this shadow over here so can you see what happens you've got that little bit of a sort of a step and now when you add the rest in it will make sense so now we can go to some let's just steal a bit of that <laughs> medium that's lying there now Let's go to neat burn sienna. So now look here. This is where the magic happens. Maybe. Give me a second to rearrange the camera. So I can zoom in on that for you. Yeah, 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, so look here. This is where the magic is now going to happen with that separated color. I'm going to put this one over here. So now you've got that's a little bit darker against a little bit lighter. But over here, it flips around. And now when I blend these guys into each other, they will stay separated. Because you've got light against dark and dark against light. It's so simple, but it's so effective. And you, if you, once you know about it, you find you actually use it quite often. Okay, so I've just blocked this back leg in straight up with burnt sienna. Take maybe just a little bit of dark into here as well. Because this dress is now still casting a shadow in this area too. I'm not particularly seeing it in his painting. I'm using a little bit of my own artist license here. Work this burnt sienna quite thick in over here. I want that to be quite dark because again, here, here's this is worked in the cast shadow over here, but not over there. The cast shadow from the dress. So that all comes around there. And now we need to go lighter. So now we'll take this um, lighter one that had the orange and a bit of yellow in it. That's him over there. Not quite light enough yet. Oopsie. Somehow picked up a little bit of blue. That ain't going to work there. So I'll just wash the brush. And just with a dry clean brush, just pick that up. Awesome. Let's... Uh, Get this in here. And it's also on that edge over there. As that leg rounds out away from you, it's now gradually curling away from the light and becoming darker. So I'm trying to be as careful as to Get that shape right. And then in the central area, yeah, there's definitely quite a bit more yellow and white in the mix. Okay, so now that we're happy with those colors and stuff, let's just unify this um, cast shadow 
with what we've painted over there. So I'm just bringing that color in. So it looks more like that one. And the same with this guy. I'm going to just unify that guy over there. All right. I think while we zoomed in over there, yeah, maybe we can go a little bit broader. And I can just do that. Then we can tackle this arm while we add it. So the arm is now mostly in got that highlight so I'm going to use this yellowy kind of mix And this will be the last piece that we need to fill up our canvas. Then we can just do finishing touches. So I'm going to lay that in. And yeah, there's a suggestion of the hand. So again, he hasn't done too much effort to get that hand perfect because it's so small. So I'm just using these burnt sienna kind of colors with a little bit of orange in it. At this stage, there are so small amounts of colors that we need. So I'm just doing impromptu mixes as, as we go. If I, if I do run out of a color, it's pointless me trying to mix up a whole new color when uh, we don't really need it. Or we only need a, just a tiny little smidgen. So again there, that shirt is casting a little shadow. There's some fingers over there. Here, this inside of the hand bit is quite dark, so I'm, I'm purposely going in there, making sure that is reasonably dark there. Great, so here we just now need to get this little shading right. I don't think my color's also 100%, so I'm also just fiddling with the colors a little bit. Your colors may be right. And then here, for that other fingers, we would need to do a, a bit of a rounding over there. Like, because that's now, let's see if I can demonstrate that. Can you see your, your thumb sort of stands out extra over there? So you've got that kind of an effect over there. And that's now the inside of the hand, so he's you now in shadow. I 
So I can see over here he has sort of suggested sort of suggested two fingers over there just for a a little bit of detail. Alrighty, so some of the background is not quite in its right place, so I'm just carefully going to push. that up over there just to get this shape correct. Same over there and then here just darken that up because that's now a little bit of a a ripple by the foot to show that the that's where the foot ends or the leg ends and the And the water reflection starts. Alrighty, I'm going to zoom out. I think we, I think we're okay with that. And I'm going to turf the palette. I think we're okay with that. Yeah, let's go there. Right, so all I'm going to do now is just one or two little touch-ups because you've done so much work now. You're bound to have little bits, now that you've got everything all one coherent painting, you're bound to have little bits that just need a bit of finessing. Now that you can see everything in... in as a whole. So that's what you want to do. And this is something that I'll often do a day or three later. Once the once the painting has now had time to just dry a bit and settle in. Because sometimes you do get slight color variations or something that looked good today. May look not quite right tomorrow. Needed just a little bit of tweaking. So doing it tomorrow is is a is a great time to do it. Because then you just look at your painting through through fresh eyes. A little bit more sun on this leg over here. So stand back and look at your painting. Sleep over it as well. <laughs> that also helps. Because tomorrow you come back and you, because you're busy here and you're working in those little fine areas and you're seeing all the little finest details and whatnot, then you, you do tend to Sometimes just lose the bigger picture. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think we'll we'll call it a day on this guy. Let's go to there. So there you go. Now you know how to paint a Gilbert sailboat. I hope you enjoyed this class as much as I did. I thought it was awesome fun. You always learn so, so much from these uh, these classic master artists. So take care. Good luck with yours. I'll see you next time. Guys, thanks for joining me in the live class. 
I hope you have yourself a wonderful weekend. Please don't forget to to like the video if you haven't already so that uh, YouTube knows it's worthwhile. And if you're watching the replay, please leave a comment because for the same reason, then YouTube will show my, my classes to other people. And if you do want to uh, get access to all my other classes, I've got hundreds more on my website. Uh, the link is at on the screen there at the moment. Onlineartlessons.com. It's super affordable. You're going to be, you'll fall on your back if you see it the price. So go and take a look at that. Maybe I can give you the link in the in the chat box as well. There's literally hundreds of classes there, and then obviously that gives you access to the replay of this class, but with the um, the edited version of it so i've cut out all the transitions and made that all nice and neat and you also get the downloadable pdfs and stuff with the full reference photo and the reference painting as well so you can work from that as you paint Alrighty, take care have a fabulous weekend guys thank you for joining me